Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for the Medicare Rural Hospital Flexibility Non-Competing Continuation Progress Report for your FY 2021 award. So our agenda for today, we're going to be covering a new resource, which are the program area logic models. Then I'll dive into the non-competing continuation background information, the actual instructions that you'll need to complete your progress report, which includes the performance narrative, budget, and attachments, especially those that are specific to those of you who are awarded for the EMS supplement. I'll also go over your reporting requirements for um, year three of the program and technical assistance resources that you have. So I'm gonna start off with a new resource that was developed um, by each of your new project officer area leads, as well as the assistance from all of your flex TA and evaluation partners, which are FMT, TASC, and Arquita. We encourage you to use these as a tool to develop your work plans, and they're based off of the FLEX program structure, which is hyperlinked here to the task websites. The logic models will be housed in the task website, along with the overarching logic model that was created by my predecessor, Sarah Young, which goes over the entire FLEX program. So the logic models are specific to program areas. We have quality, financial and operational, population health, and EMS. We're very interested in to hear your feedback on these logic models, so please reach out to your project officer with comments about them. I'll now show you what they look like on the website. So here you can see the flex program area logic models. Um, you can dive into each of the individual ones here. And then it will show up on a one page logic model that discusses inputs, activities, outputs, outcomes, and impacts. Again, this is based off of the FLEX program structure. So the activities are the exact ones that you have within your FLEX program with suggested outputs and outcomes to help you plan your work. Again, we encourage you to please use these and um, provide us feedback on how helpful you find them. Now to dive into the NCC. So this is FY 2021, which starts from September 1st of 2021 to August 31st of 2022. It's the third year of your five-year project period. The NCC guidance was actually released in EHB yesterday, and it will be due back in EHB on Friday, May 14th. The NCC progress report serves as the basis for your continued funding, and it incorporates a streamlined review process. The purpose of the progress report is to discuss the changes and challenges for your current year, which is FY 2020, and future year of FY 2021 of your FLEX program. Your project plans for continuation of funds and your progress report is an opportunity to share updated readjustment and refinement of your FLEX activities. So just to remind you of where we are in the timeline, we are currently in March in the middle of the uh, project year two for FY20. And you see in the green box here that your NCC progress report you should be working on now. So as an overview for what to expect in your progress report, you of course have the performance narrative. You have a budget justification for your year three for FY2021. You're going to do a work plan template update. You're gonna update us on any position descriptions and biographical sketches for new staff or vacant positions. We also have uh, the Flex QI program proposal, which I'll get into a little more detail later. And for the eight of you who are awarded the EMS supplement, you also have to do a progress report, a budget justification and work plan template update specific to the EMS. So for everyone's performance narrative, it is no more than 10 pages, no smaller than one inch margins and readable 12 point font. It may be single or double spaced and please use PDF, doc or docx formats. These are all uploaded into EHB. The contents of your performance narrative. We're asking you to describe the significant changes, challenges and barriers faced or anticipated for the remainder of your FY20 budget year which is September 1st, 2020 to August 31st, 2021 and future FY 2021 budget year, 
from September 1st, 2021 to August 31st of 2022. Please include activities potentially not completed or in danger of delay or those that may need a change of scope. Please discuss any changes due to COVID-19 response for your current or future year work. Discuss any staffing plan changes since the 2020 NCC report, which was submitted in May of 2020, and any unfilled positions and plans to fill those positions. Please describe the plans to mitigate or manage significant changes, challenges, and barriers. And describe any potential or anticipated impact on meeting of any of the FLEX program goals. For example, this could include the impact of the FY19 carryover funds on work plan items in FY2020. Please describe any anticipated technical assistance needs that we may be able to help with. As a reminder, all FLEX project activities must fit within one of the core areas. You can consult the FY2019 Competitive FLEX Program Guidance hyperlinked here. If you are uncertain where your project area fits, Please discuss with your project officer, and it must fit within one of the six program areas of quality improvement, operation financial improvement, population health improvement, rural EMS improvement, innovative model development, and critical access hospital designation. Significant changes in the objectives, aims, or purposes must go through the prior approval change of scope process in EHB. This would be any major addition or deletion of a program area. For your budget, please discuss any significant changes that are less than 25% of your total award in your FY2021 budget relative to FY2020. Please detail the costs within each object class category. This includes personnel, for example, each employee supported by funds from this award, you should include the name of the employee, the base salary, the percent FTE on the grant, and the amount of federal funds expended in the budget year for the upcoming FY 2021 year. You should also list travel, which hopefully we'll be able to do in FY 2021, which should include cost of local and long distance travel, itemized estimates of mileage and airfare, and lodging. Contracts should also include a clear explanation of the purpose of the contract, how the costs were estimated, and the specific contract deliverables. For the budget requirements, recipients should base the budgets on the FY 2021 flex award levels. Please see the notice of uh, the NCC progress report for details on those levels. Um, and they should be listed in the section five, I'm sorry, four of the NCC instructions. You should have at least one full-time equivalent position dedicated to the state flex program. Florp expects that all recipients should participate in the 2022 national flex RSV meeting and one other regional or national meeting for each year. A flex representative was encouraged to attend the NRHA CAW conference in Kansas City and any new personnel within one year of starting should attend the FLEX program workshop in Duluth. Indirect costs of the program are limited by statute and are no more than 15% of total direct costs. Budget restrictions. Recipients and subaward recipients may not use FLEX funds for the following purposes. For direct patient care, including healthcare services, equipment and supplies, to purchase ambulances and other vehicles, or to purchase or improve real property. Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Or for any purposes which are inconsistent with the language of the Notice of Funding Opportunity, also hyperlinked here. Here we go. Attachments. So each document should include the grant number, project title, organization name, and primary contact name. For example, listing a document title such as Alaska Flex Narrative FY 2021. Attach only the components listed in the extension instructions and submissions will be returned if there's insufficient or missing information. Please do not scan any documents as images as we may be not able to search those. So attachment number one, um, we are asking you to update the work plan template. 
please use the work plan template hyperlinked here to update the current year for FY 2020 if a new activity has been introduced through a change of scope or an activity has been terminated. We are asking that you do not update the work plan to include quantitative outputs because that will be included in the end of year report. For a future year for FY 2021, please include ongoing activities that will continue from the current budget period, as well as any new activities that indicate if an activity is new or ongoing. In attachment two, we are asking you to update uh, position descriptions and biological sketches, biographical sketches. Please include position descriptions for all new and or existing staff for which the program support is requested. Please indicate if the positions are filled or currently vacant. Please include a biographical sketch or resume for all new staff. If there are no changes to staff, you may include a single statement that says no staff changes since May of 2020. We are also asking you to voluntarily submit to us any primary contacts of your significant contracts or partners. This will help us with identifying any common partners across the FLEX programs. We will not contact your partners for any reason without your knowledge. So now on to attachment three, which is the FLEX quality improvement project proposal. As a reminder, the FLEX QI project was introduced on the Arquita Virtual Knowledge Group on February 18th. FORPA will require the development of a QI project in one quality measure area, um, and some states may choose to select more than one if feasible. Measures selected for the FLEX QI project may be a part of the MBGROUP core measures, the MBGROUP additional measures, or other quality measures that critical access hospitals may find relevant for QI purposes. The FLEX QI project must be a part of the state FLEX work plan for program year three. F4HP is highly encouraging the use of existing or planned QI activities. States that will need to engage, states will need to engage the critical access hospitals to identify the project that is most beneficial and timely to support critical access hospital efforts. After assessing CA engagement and needs, state flex coordinators may decide to work in a subgroup of CAUs or with all the CAUs in your state. You are required to have at least two critical access hospitals participate in the QI project. Now I will pull up the template and have Natalia Vargas, our quality coordinator, go over the instructions with you. Thanks, Dori. Hi, everyone. Good to see everyone here. Um, I'll walk you through the attachment three that you will need to turn in with your NCC. And um, I'll just provide a little bit of background. So uh, in the first page is just some background information so that you have everything you need for planning purposes. We have stated the overall purpose and as well as some context there for you. And then we go into an overview of what the requirements are for the specific projects. Um, and then later on, I'll talk about um, more specifically what you need to submit in those instructions. So starting here with the overview, or actually let's just go back up and, and let's start with the purpose. Um, so again, this project initiative um, provides the states an, an opportunity to um, have a structure framework to work with your critical access hospitals in improving quality of care for patients and to support implementation of evidence-based initiatives with those hospitals. So we're hoping that through the project, um, we can use what we learn for programmatic uh, direction of the FLEX program, the MBQA program, and uh, in any additional improvement efforts with, with hospitals in the future. So the QI activities have always been a part of your work plans um, as in a part of the FLEX program, but having this structure framework, we're hoping that will enhance uh, learning and collaboration between states, which hopefully will help you think of innovative solutions for the complex QI issues that we've been hearing about from all of you at one point or another. And then hopefully through participation in this project at the end, um, our FMT team will help us evaluate um, the, the, the entire initiative and 
draw some lessons learned. In terms of the overview for the requirements, um, we have listed uh, here a few that are very key to keep in mind as you develop the proposal and also as you think about the design of those projects. So every state must include um, this project as part of the year three work plan, as story stated in the slides. And we're really encouraging all of you to leverage your existing activities so that you can um, make it a part of one of those um, activities 1.1 through 1.8. Uh, the FLEX project must be based on one of the MBQEP domains. So I've listed those there for you to remind you. And um, it should be prioritized by all or a subset of critical access hospitals in your state based on the priorities that you have discussed um, that either you know of or you know from your contractors um, or you know directly from working with the QI teams at the hospital. The topics that you select, and this is really important, it must be feasible to conduct in a year. So uh, while this timeline might seem scary, there are several types of topics that you can pare down to make sure that you have a QI goal that you can meet in a year. So making sure that you think of framing your QI goal accordingly so that it is feasible within that time frame will become really important as you think of your design. So um, this project may be appropriate for all critical access hospitals or a portion of your state's critical access hospitals. And we understand some states um, have a portion of hospitals that are either um, at capacity with dealing with um, COVID-19 still, or are just you know, coming up for air. So you know, we ask you to, to use your best judgment and we trust you as our partners to select the subgroup of critical access hospitals for which this project may, may be beneficial and for your, for your state as well to um, move forward with, with QI activities. So again, it's not required that you engage all hospitals in your state. That should really, it's, it's very flexible, but we do require at least two hospitals for this project um, as we stated in the BKG session. But we're also highly encouraging all of you, especially the states, you know, that have a larger number of hospitals to think about ways in which you can engage more hospitals. So the idea is that um, typically QI happens at, at a facility le level. And while it is great to learn from implementation of a QI activity at that level, we want to understand at a broader level what happens uh, with implementation of, of your project. So um, it provides more generalizability if you, if you can integrate more hospitals. Um, so based on your proposals, each of you will be placed in an innovation lab to assist with the development of your individual projects. And this is where we will really encourage cross-state learning and collaboration in order to drive innovation in QI. Uh, we're hoping um, that some of you can naturally find other peers that perhaps um, are doing the work that you're interested in, uh, but from a slightly different perspective and context that can help inform the work that you're doing. So ultimately, those sessions are supposed to be really helpful for, for all of you and are meant to be like working sessions to help you complete the project. And if we go further, down. Um, just a couple more to mention. So the measures that you um, select for the QI project, here's a little bit more specific information as well as some examples that may help you think about the measure that you can select if you haven't um, picked one already. So one of the core MBQIP measure areas, again, is definitely encouraged, uh, especially for uh, those states that have limited capacity at the moment to do anything else beyond MBQIP, this is a good way to address the project and still meet all requirements. So one of the um, MBQIP additional measures or a component is also um, acceptable. And lastly, a quality measure that 
any of your hospitals find relevant or that you can uh, engage other hospitals um, and you have a little bit of consensus around how feasible it would be to conduct a project based on that measure because they really care about that particular QI activity. So this could be measures that are not included within AmbiQuip, but still fit those domain areas. Uh, so one example of that is the swing bed measures. And if you need other ideas, um, please refer to the table, or sorry, to the blue box there on the page that has um, like a short menu of different potential options that would be uh, very good for the project and fit all of the requirements. So more specifically on what you need to do now for uh, putting together this document to turn it in. Um, so it's just a few questions. Uh, all we want to know is high level information to, for us to be able to place you in the right innovation lab and to ensure that you have the most valuable experience during the year in those innovation labs. So first we're asking you to select the MBQIP domain that corresponds to the quality measure that you select for the project. So that's simply, again, based on those categories, um, the MBQIP domains. And then we ask you to describe the, the QI project idea. And this does not have to be really comprehensive. We understand that um, in this stage in the game, you will be probably thinking about how to engage uh, QI staff, which hospitals to engage and so forth. So we want to have just a general idea and with the understanding that, that your thinking might evolve um, around the details of your project. So while you don't need to have exactly, you know, how you're going to measure different, um, different goals uh, throughout the project, we expect just a general, you know, idea of what is your topic or measure that you're thinking of selecting. And, um, a paragraph around the, that idea and what, how you see operationalizing that idea in your state. And if we go further down to number three, we're asking you here to select the activity in which you, this Flex QI project will be talked under. So basically what Tori mentioned in the slide, um, it, this has to be part of your work plan, right? So this, right here is just asking you to check the box for which component of your work plan will this be reflected on. So that way it makes it easier for you to find and for us to assess as POs as well. And um, this question here is if you've already recruited critical access hospitals to participate with you in this project, um, or if you're already thinking of, the, of a group of hospitals that for for which uh, this project would be really feasible. We're asking that information here and then more specifically to list those hospitals. Um, then a couple more questions here that are left and we're asking if you're going to be working with a subcontractor, please indicate that in there. And then um, again, we're not going to be contacting anyone without your knowledge, but just to give us a general idea. And we want you to indicate a primary contact um, in your state um, that will be attending the, the innovation labs. So we're, we're asking the FLEX program coordinators, again, because you have responsibility for this project um, to be participating along with either a subcontractor staff or any other FLEX staff that you see appropriate. And then lastly, we're asking uh, to briefly state uh, what you expect to get out of the innovation labs. And this question is, you know, we just honestly want your opinion around, you know, now that you've, you've got a chance to, to think about your concept, what would be helpful to you to uh, get done during those innovation lab opportunities? We want to understand from your perspective, how to make your time worthwhile. And that's about it. So, so basically keep it short. Again, we um, are taking some of the pressure off by um, keeping it broad. Uh, we are definitely going to be reading through this and using the information to carefully select you into and place you into an innovation lab.
So that's about it for my update. I'll, I'll turn it back to Tori. Thank you so much, Natalia. Okay, heading back to the slides, I again want to reiterate these ideas that F4HP came up with with our partners um, on measures that you may want to engage with. This is, of course, not an exhaustive list by any means, and we welcome your feedback. Um, and we encourage you to reach out to your project officer as well as Natalia to really discuss your project ideas. We're here to engage with you and help you work through any challenges that you have as you're planning for this QI project. This is new for all of us, so we really want it to be a collaborative effort. Now going into the attachments that are specific to the EMS supplement. So the eight awardees of the EMS supplement funding need to include a progress report update, which will report on significant changes and challenges faced or anticipated for the remainder of the FY20 budget year and the future FY2021 budget year. For example, any impact that the FY19 carryover had on the FY2020 work plan. The next attachment specific to the EMS supplement awardees is the budget justification. Again, the purpose of the budget justification is to provide a clear overview of the proposed spending for the third year of your funded project. Travel and contractual costs must also be itemized and you can see the guidance related to the budget justification for general flex. We also are asking for itemized travel cost and contractual cost. The final attachment for the EMS supplements will be an update of your EMS supplement work plan template for your future FY 2021 program year. Again, we are not asking that you include quantitative outputs because that will be required for your end of year report. As a reminder, here are your upcoming reporting requirements. So to complete out the FY 2020 year, you have a performance improvement and measurement system PIMS report due on October 30th. Again, this is due for your FY 2020 year. Also for your FY 2020 year is your end of year report, which will be due on November 30th. And then you have your federal financial report, the FFR, which will be due on January 30th of 2022. You can then expect to see the fourth year of your NCC progress report coming out around the same time in March of 2022. Just a reminder about some technical assistance resources that you have available. If you have any issues with EHB, unfortunately your product officer won't be able to assist you very much. So we encourage you to reach out to our HRSA EHB Help Center. I have included here a link to their online help center system, as well as their phone number and email. You also have your FRHP project officer to assist you as you plan through your NCC process. Task is also available to review one section of your NCC. Andy will be sharing those due dates with you in just a little bit. I also encourage you to use the Flex Forum to bounce ideas off of each other in the peer-to-peer -peer resource that the Flex Forum provides. All of these documents, as well as the template, are listed under the Flex Grant Guidance and Templates on the task website linked below. If you uh, don't remember who your project officer is, here is a helpful map to show you who your PO is. It also states who is the program area lead for those program area logic models in case you have direct feedback you'd like to address with that project officer lead. We'll now take your questions, but before I do that, I wanna point out contact information for myself as your program coordinator. We also have a new lead GMS who is a grants management specialist, Bria Haley. And she is also happy to answer any questions that you have related to the grants management side. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and we can go to questions. Hey Tori, so we do have some questions in the chat box and some of them we've answered along the way, but I think all of them are gonna be good to discuss at the end so everyone can hear the answers. Um, so our first question uh, in regards to the performance narrative it looks like the emphasis is on COVID and its impact, as was the case last year. 
but are we to go back to the old format where we also provide more detail and progress and future of activities? So this is a streamlined report similar to last year. We're not asking you to go into a ton of detail. Certainly COVID is of interest to everyone in the federal government right now, how it's impacting your programs. But we also want to focus the NCC on your future year and prepping for that year three of the program. We get the full year look back in your end of your report and we don't want you to be duplicating any information twice to us. Please let me know if that answered your question. And the next couple of questions are related to the work plan documents. So the first one was, um, do they need to submit just the current work plan with updates in progress or just a work plan for the future year or both? So if you've made significant changes to your work plan for your current year in FY20, you can update that through the, so the work plan template of course has a lot of tabs to them. One of those tabs is your FY20 work plan, which you can update as you see fit for your current year. But we really are looking at the FY 2021 for your future year to see what activities you have planned for year three. So significant updates for 2020 and then the future year 2021. And the actual template that they need to be submitting is the same version that was used in FY 19 and FY 20, correct? Correct, and that is also on the task website under the FY 2021 funding and guidances. So that'll all be right there for you. It's also hyperlinked in the NCC instructions. And the next question, Natalia has kind of been answering this in the chat, so I don't know if you wanna just address this to everybody, Natalia, regarding the difference, the, the page six on the NCC. Yes. Sure, yeah, so um, someone made a note um, of page six of the NCC, which mentions the Ambiquip QI project. And I apologize for that error. It should say the Flex QI project. So to clarify, there is only one um, QI project and that is the Flex QI project. The most recent guidance for that you can find in attachment three. Um, so everything you need to know, it's there. And if you have further questions beyond that of your review, please contact um, your PO. And the updated language is in the NCC version on the task website as well. That has the correct language that denotes it as the Flex QI project. Right. So aside from that, I think that was all the questions we have so far. Um, Laura, this is Catherine. I did have more questions in the chat. Can I just address those? Go for it. Okay, I'm very confused. Um, I understand now it's the Flex QI project. That's clear. That's great. Um, but is it mandatory or is it optional? Page six says optional. Your slide said Flex programs must. We are highly encouraging all Flex programs to participate as they are able in this Flex QI project. Um, we will have discussions individually with each state if they feel that they are unable to participate. Our goal is for all 45 programs to participate with at least two critical access hospitals in this FlexQI project. That's great, thanks. By having you submit this through the NCC, that addresses that as well. So please uh, talk to us if you foresee any issues with that. We need to know in, in advance, but we're always happy to have those discussions. I have a question. Um, so on the slide about the budget, um, if I'm recalling correctly, it said something about documenting changes to the budget that are less than 25 percent and um so am i understanding it correctly that like if we're not going to have a change like if we're using the same contractors at the same at the same um cost from fy20 to fy 2021 we don't have to actually explain that am i understanding that correctly so your budget justification is going to be similar to any other budget justification you've done in the past However, if you have 
major changes that would go over 25% of your total award, that needs to go through a prior approval process in EHB. Anything less than 25%, you are allowed to shift your budget. So we, when we review your NCC, we compare to your last year's budget justification. So if there are any, if there are minor changes that will totally be, you don't need to justify that to us. We understand that there are shifts. But if there are significant changes that exceed 25% of your total award, that's when we're gonna give you a call and ask you to submit a prior approval for that change. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for the clarification. Any additional questions? As a reminder, the EHB guidance is available on EHB itself or on the task website. I recommend that you utilize the task website for the most updated guidance for the NCC. As a reminder, the due date is Friday, May 14th to submit this. Project officers are always more than willing to review anything you would like to submit prior to formal EHB submission. So please feel free to run by any project ideas or updates that you don't know if they make sense just yet. We are here to be your thought partners as you work through this NCC process. Um, this is Lisa. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Innovation Center, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering what the name of it is, that's gonna be attached to our uh, quality project. Um, how will that work for us? I mean, we will all be sort of in one group. If we happen to be working with other partners in our state or something like that, does that interfere with being part of the innovation component? I'm having a hard time visualizing what that's going to look like. Natalia, do you want to take Can you repeat off? the question? I'm so sorry. Well, uh, the Innovation Center, I'm sorry, I don't have it right now. Innovation right. Labs. Pardon me? The Innovation Labs. Yes, the in thank you. Yes, the Innovation Labs. So, um, it sounds like we're all going to be put into an innovation lab that is focused on the particular project that we're going to be working on based on what we submit mm -hmm. in that document. So Mike, I'm having a hard time sort of visualizing how this is going to work. Um, will we then, um, uh, is that going to be to us as a group where we're going to have some shared learning? Is it individual technical assistance on our innovation? Um, are we able to bring to the table any um, particular partners or knowledge or skills or programs, you know, thinking that we're in the state with the Pennsylvania rural health model. I don't know mm -hmm. if that, if, if that interferes or does it make a difference that way? Sure. That's a good question, Lisa. Thank you. So sure. we're hoping that by having this template, we can place you with folks who are doing a topic that is similar to in some way to yours so that you can get something out from uh, collaboration within those innovation labs, while at the same time embracing the variability that we know exists uh, throughout the country in terms of the QI um, project specifically that you're doing for your state. Um, so while your own individual projects may be different, coming to those groups will ho hopefully simulate some learning and then help in terms of more targeted technical assistance around those common topic areas that you all select. And so uh, you'll have an opportunity to for sure work with your relevant for the work that you're doing. And by doing that um, and sharing those experiences as well, we're hoping that it will drive and simulate learning. We don't want uh, the groups to be static and, and in any way. And so we're hoping that um, you, you bring ideas forward to uh, the group facilitators to how you know, those experiences can be uh, the most useful for all of you, while at the same time, it will allow you to sort of keep track of the project. Since you only have a year to complete, I think one really helpful thing that you'll find um, is that by having the learning coaches 
um, lead the, the innovation lab that you're in. Uh, you will have an opportunity to sort of um, go over your milestones of the project and, and see, um, you know, perhaps other QI approaches that might be beneficial to consider in order to ensure that you reach your QI goal. We understand that there is different levels of, um, of expertise in the country in terms of, you know, you may already come in with a very strong idea. Uh, and participating in those groups will, will hopefully help you sort of finance that design for the project, but at the same time, um, hopefully the innovation piece will really become clear to you when you're uh, talking with everyone else in that group. So that's sort of the overall concept. I don't know if that answered your question, Lisa, but... It, it did, and this might be getting down in the weeds, but I don't know if other folks have the same question, so you can tell me to stop talking. But do you have very, uh, do you have a, a, a sense of what you hope to get from the innovation labs? And is there some sort of, a, of an outcome that you have anticipated for that? And also, do you have the coaches already selected or is that a process that you're working on right now? So we are going to be, um working on that, uh, the structure of those innovation labs, and hopefully we'll have a kickoff meeting before the, um, the year begins so that you have more information. And this is after we have an opportunity to review all of your proposals. Uh, so we will convene our TA partners and evaluation partner to have a discussion around uh, what makes more sense in terms of the structure. But uh, we're partnering with Task and Arquita to lead those groups. And so you will hear definitely more information along the way um, on that specifically. And what is the, the other piece of your question, I don't wanna miss it, but I think it was important. Uh, oh, do you have specific outcomes oh, yes. that, that you are anticipating and sort of how you're going to do a report out or whatever you need to do regarding- Yeah, sure. Labs? So for, since each of you will have a project to complete and, uh, and you have a year to, to get there, we're really interested in looking at what is each of your individual QI goals and how um, by having the opportunity to conduct some evaluation activities at the innovation lab level and across, uh, for us to be able to connect those dots. And that's really where the learning um, that the lessons learned uh, is supposed to be derived from, is from your collaboration, your interactions, and your opportunities to have innovations in quality improvement approaches in order to complete these projects. But that's not something we wanna put on you. So I didn't go over too much of that in this presentation. It's more for us as we put together this design, uh, we want to understand potentially how can innovations that happen at the state level that is really you know, placing accountability at the state level can drive the quality improvement activities at the hospital level. So it's, it's very, uh, this approach is very different because usually um, addressing QI is, is complex enough at one level, but we're really trying through the FLEX program to address it at the state level and at the hospital level. And then, Beyond that, we're trying to see if um, innovations that happen at the hospital level can be um, can be applicable to other hospitals. So, in, so at the health system level, really. So we're driving towards understanding what happens at the health system level by understanding how you each implement your projects. But obviously, um, this is some of the learnings that we're hoping that we'll be able to crystallized for us at, on the Forbes side at the end of the project, but is, um, you know, really exciting because all of you are really driving that work. And, you know, I see a lot of value in um, you being our major key informants in really un helping us address that. All right, thank you so much. And I also wanted to say there was another question in the chat about this. Um, yeah, I think I have it pulled up right here. Are you talking about the one from Caroline? Are we able to choose the states yes. we collaborate with? You can certainly uh, find alliances for sure. I've had some states that I already 
uh, talk to, if you do have that situation already, um, please add it in your NCC. Um, that th that would be your preference and, and who, um, who to work with. So in that last question, uh, question number seven, where it asks, is asking you expectations for the innovation labs, if you see um, a benefit already to form collaborations with other peers, um, and you know upfront that that would be extremely beneficial to you, please uh, state that there uh, so that we know that as well. But yes, we're hoping that this project will actually stimulate some of that um, because normally you don't get to do that with MBQIP. And so by thinking together with other people that may be trying to solve a similar problem, that's where we're hoping to see a little bit of more of an innovative approach to solving that problem that perhaps if we just look down at one state and you doing it by yourself is not going to be as um, beneficial as looking at, uh, look, looking at it from different states. And then finding opportunities to understand how you can leverage each other's um, data or resources as well. That's wonderful. Natalia, this is Carla. Can I chime in yeah, quickly? Carla, please. Mm -hmm. um, so we are still sorting out kind of the structure and the, how the flow of the innovations labs will look. But if it's helpful in terms of that part of the outcome from a flex level, is that we'll have a template available that you can kind of put your, yes. pro, you know, to help you structure both the project design and the outcomes. So that it, it won't be completely um, free form. There will be sort of like, here's the pieces that we're looking for you for you to be able to document and follow. Yeah, so Jennifer added to the chat that in uh, Kansas, Indiana, and Illinois are already talking about working together on swing bets. And that's exactly one type of example that, um, that Will, I know will bring a lot of value. And this is really meant to be flexible to allow you the opportunity to really offer your input back to us. It's kind of like a feeding um, feedback loop in terms of your opportunity to really do some different work that hopefully is meaningful enough that we can draw some uh, lessons at the federal level to understand more broadly what are some of the, the QI activities that are important to all of the states and that are feasible, most importantly. I think even though sometimes you may have one priority, if it's not usable or feasible, then it's not going to ever get implemented as a, as a measure that will get shelved. And we want measures that are not on, on a shelf. We want you to you know, use them, implement, learn from the implementation, and then sort of tell us those learnings. And then there is another question from Renata. Um, are any states considering addressing quality improvement utilizing uh, community health workers or any other non-clinical discipline? Yeah, so I think that there is, uh, is such a wonderful approach that they have in Arkansas to community health integration. Um, so for sure, I encourage all of you to um, think of ways that what you're doing at the hospital level can also engage um, more broadly. I don't know what that would look like, but you know, we're definitely would be interesting to see those approaches that intersect population health for sure. So again, just remember that um, any any topic must still fit within the MBQIP domains. And that's really important just to maintain that structure in some way so that we can make sure that uh, we design the innovation lab experience for you uh, to, to be um, worth your time. Okay, if there are no more questions, please reach out to your project officer to have those discussions and work through any um, challenges you foresee either writing up the NCC or specifically attachment three. Um, and again, the due date is Friday, May 14th, and I'll turn it back over to Andy. Thanks, Tori. Um, be able to see my slides, all right? 
awesome. So yeah, and some of this, uh, Tori already touched on, but just a reminder uh, to reach out to TASK during this process and all your partners, um, and specifically for a grant review. So TASK is available to review one component of your cooperative agreement application prior to your final submission. So examples like looking at your work plan or your narrative or budget. Uh, so if you would like assistance, please choose one selection uh, of your proposal uh, for task to review and just submit a request to task at ruralcenter.org by April 30th. Uh, and then allow us five business days to review and we'll get back to you. And uh, we'll respond with common su uh, suggestions. We're not able to rewrite content for you, um, but we'll definitely offer comments and suggestions. And we're also happy to... Uh, have conversations throughout and talk through uh, suggestions and comments via phone. Um, Tori alluded to this, and so just uh, kind of reemphasizing. So uh, make sure to keep sharing. Um, I always say that if you have a question, and more often than not, someone else will have that same question. So feel free to post your uh, question in the Flex uh, Program Forum. Um, and yeah, we can uh, use that community to answer those questions. If you have any uh, need any help uh, logging into the Flex program forum, just reach out to us again at task at ruralcenter.org. Um, so kind of with all of this, we'll, uh, following this webinar, we'll be sending out an email with this information about the grant review. So you have that date to keep in mind uh, at the end of April. Um, so be very similar to this content. And then we'll include some other materials that will be helpful for you um, for the FY 2021 NCC. So those funding guidance and supporting materials, those are all, all available on the website, but we'll link to those again. And then we'll just include some other data sources, uh, guides and manuals that are helpful during the NCC, some uh, publications and some other webinars that might be helpful. So. Just be on the lookout for those. Um, they'll all be linked in the email. And uh, yeah, just remember we're here to help. So yeah, if there are any questions, please let us know. And uh, yeah, I'll stop sharing. And just a reminder, uh, all this stuff, www.ruralcenter.org slash task. And then our, there's our phone number and task at ruralcenter.org uh, is our TA address. Feel free to use the chat box or uh, unmute. And if you called in, it'll be star six to unmute. All right, well, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Um, so, and if they do, you know where to reach us all. Um, and we can give you 30 minutes of your day back. And like I said, this will be recorded and we'll send, uh, we'll send this out and make it available so you have all this. Um, we saw some issues with the slides, uh, accessing those on the website. Those should be updated within 30 minutes or so, and then we'll send those out as well. Um, but like we said, let us know if you have any questions.